Hello and welcome once again to a special message from Philadelphia Baptist Church in Rutledge, Georgia. I am Pastor Stephen Chambers, and in this message we're going to be looking in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 11. Today is Easter Sunday, and I would like to share with you a few thoughts from a portion of Scripture dealing with the very first people who learned of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you read through the Gospel accounts, it's interesting that no one, when they heard that Jesus had risen from the grave, responded with anything like, I knew it. Everyone who heard of it was astonished. They were confused, or they just didn't believe it. The resurrection was not a foregone conclusion to the people who were there. Even though Jesus had told them multiple times that He would rise again, they still doubted and they misunderstood. It's, it's human nature not to believe something that you do not understand. And that is why we have to choose to have faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 1 says, Faith says, I may not understand it, but I will believe it because God says so. In the text of our sermon today, we meet a group of people, a group of women who were very close friends with the Lord Jesus Christ. They came to the tomb early on the morning of Jesus' resurrection to anoint His body for burial. Uh, they had not had time the day that Jesus was crucified to do the usual preparations that they would do for a burial. So they were coming to give Him a proper burial, as it were. And how they reacted and how others reacted to the information that Jesus had risen from the dead is, uh, tells us a lot about the importance of having faith, especially faith in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's begin reading in verse number 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And when they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again? And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulcher, and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Believing in the resurrection is necessary in order to be saved, but it also has profound implications on our daily living. If you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of God, then you should have no problem believing whatever else God says. It means that God has the power to solve whatever problems you may face, and you should not doubt Him. I want you to notice in this story, first of all, the confusion of these women. We are told in verse number 1 that these women came to the tomb early on the first day of the week. Around sunrise, they found their way to the place where Jesus had been buried, and they came prepared to anoint Jesus' body, to pay their last respects, if you will. And they expected to find Jesus' body still there. Mark records it this way, Mark 16, verses 1 through 3. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? So they came completely expecting for Jesus to still be there. Now, 
Given the fact that Jesus said he would rise again, and he said that it would be three days after his crucifixion, you would think that they would have believed that he would have risen again. This seems like an act of faithlessness. It seems like an act of doubt. But let's not be too quick to judge them. After all, these ladies were among some of the most faithful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were the last ones to leave when Jesus was crucified. They were the first ones to come to the tomb to anoint his body. Luke 23 says in verse 55, The women also which came with him from Galilee followed after, and beheld the sepulcher, and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So these ladies had followed when they took Jesus' body down and had noted where they had buried him so that they could then come back at the first opportunity and anoint his body. One of these ladies was Mary Magdalene. She was one whom Jesus had delivered from demonic possession. She had experienced the power of the Lord Jesus Christ personally. So why did they not believe that Jesus would rise again? Why would they come to the tomb expecting to find his body? It was a simple lack of understanding. Did you notice in our text in verse number 4, it says, It came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. There was just some things they didn't understand. You know, our understanding is often our greatest enemy. We need to realize about our own understanding that it is limited and very short-sighted. Now, we do have some understanding, but not enough. There are going to be many times that things happen that we don't understand, we can't explain, circumstances that we go through, events that happen in life that completely baffle us. Our temptation is to to wear ourselves out trying to make sense of it. But we need to become okay with the fact that there are going to be many things that we just will not be able to explain in life, many things that we will not understand. See, what happens is when we cannot understand something, often we assume the problem lies elsewhere. The problem is with the person or the circumstance that we can't understand. We think to ourselves that if it were as it should be, well, then we would understand it. But really, our lack of understanding should be viewed the other way around. Instead of blaming others and blaming our circumstances, we need to accept responsibility for our limited understanding. To put it bluntly, we need to recognize the fact that we're ignorant. There are some things that we just don't know. Logically, we should doubt ourselves because of our lack of understanding. And we should never doubt God because of our lack of understanding. When we don't understand what God is doing, that is really just proof that He is God and we are not. As Isaiah 55 says, His ways are not our ways and His thoughts are not our thoughts. His thoughts and His ways are so much higher than our ways, it's like as high as the heavens are from the earth. They started this day in confusion. Arriving at the tomb, not finding Jesus' body, finding the stone rolled away, they were much much perplexed. But I want you to notice, secondly, their instruction from verses 5 through 8. As they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they, that is the the two angels who were there, said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? These angels asked a, a very blunt and simple question. Why are you looking for someone who is alive in a graveyard? That's not where you would normally find people who are living unless they are there for a funeral. And they went on to explain in verses 6 through 8 that he was not there because he had done exactly what he said he would do. He had risen from the grave. In essence, they were saying to these ladies, stop and think about what you're doing. Jesus isn't here. He's risen from the dead. 
And then they reminded him of Jesus' words. When we read through the Gospels, we find that on at least five different occasions, Jesus said that he would rise again. For instance, in Matthew chapter 12, verses 39 through 40. Let's turn there together. Here Jesus talks about Jonah and says that Jonah was a sign that similarly Jesus would be in, in the grave for three days and three nights. Verse 39, He answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, but there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, that is a very clear prophecy by the Lord Jesus Christ of His resurrection, that He would die and be buried, He'd be in the earth three days and three nights, and then He would rise again. But see, it was not as clear to them who first heard it. In Matthew chapter 17, we find another instance. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 23. Jesus said, And they shall kill him, speaking of himself. Let's go back to verse 22. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. Again, very clearly, Jesus said that he would, be, he would die, he would be buried, and he would rise again three days later. One more place in Matthew, over in chapter 20. Look at verse number 19 and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. Over in Luke chapter 13, we find where Jesus, in answer to a question that had to do with Herod, he said, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils and do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. There's the fourth instance of Jesus predicting and promising His resurrection. In John chapter 2 and verse number 19, as the fifth, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And He was not referring to the physical temple. He was talking about His body. So at least five different times, Jesus had said that He would rise again. And the angels that were there at the tomb, when the ladies came in, reminded them of Jesus' words. Now the curious thing is that the enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ did not forget these statements that Jesus made. You're in the book of Matthew still. Go over to chapter 26 and let's notice verses 62 and following. Matthew 26, verse 62, The high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? Excuse me, Matthew chapter 27, verse 62. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver, that deceiver said, While he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. And Pilate said unto them, Ye have your watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. So the enemies of the Lord Jesus remembered that he had promised to rise again after three days. Why? didn't Jesus' followers remember that? They were so sure about it, the enemies were, that they wanted to put guards in case someone came and told his stole his body and tried to claim it was a resurrection. Here's the truth. Confusion often count, compounds itself by making us forget the things that we had previously known. In this particular case, the, the women were confused because they expected to find Jesus' body, and they didn't. 
And in that confusion, they forgot something that they should have known, that they had heard Jesus say with their own ears that he would rise again. And sometimes we need some very blunt reminders to bring us back to our senses. Like the angels very bluntly said, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen just like he said. Many times we need to be reminded in our confusion of the things that we do know to be true. Don't get frustrated when you have to be reminded of truths that you already know during a time of confusion. Because you are forgetting many times to apply those facts to your current situation. See, when we face trials and difficulties in life, God is expecting us to build on the things that we have previously learned. And in order to do that, we have to remember the things that we previously learned. And thankfully for these ladies, the instruction worked because in verse number 8, it says that they remembered His words. This was an aha moment, if you will. They thought, aha, that's right. This is what He said. He said He would rise again. We've seen their confusion and we've seen their instruction. But let's notice thirdly their humiliation. Again, verse 9 of Luke chapter 24 says, They returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. So what did they do when they finally understood that Jesus had risen as He said? Well, they did the most natural thing that there is. They went and told others. Specifically, they went and told the 11 remaining apostles and the other disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they went and told Jesus' close, closest earthly fo followers. And what would you expect the reaction of those people to be? Well, wouldn't we expect them to believe what these ladies said? But that's not what happened. The Bible says that their words seemed like idle tales, and they believed them not. They treated them like they were just telling stories. Their closest friends and the ones who should have believed them the most essentially treated them like liars. Have you ever had that unfortunate experience of being accused of lying when you know that you're being 100% honest? It's very frustrating. It's very discouraging. And no doubt these ladies felt both frustration and discouragement when their closest friends and followers of Jesus refused to believe them. Here's the thing to remember when people doubt what you know to be true. Don't take it personally. Even if they try to make it personal, don't take it personally. What is important is that you know and believe the truth. If other people don't believe you, that does not change the truth. You need to be faithful to the truth regardless of what others say and do. Now these disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ we're all having a hard time understanding what was going on. Remember, we look back on the resurrection as a historical fact, but as they were living in it in the moment, it was not a foregone conclusion in their minds that Jesus was going to rise again. It should have been because Jesus told them that, but it wasn't. In Luke 24, we find a couple other instances where Jesus appeared to the disciples and they had a hard time believing that it was actually him. Verse 36 says, they, As they thus spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. So even when Jesus showed up in person, they assumed they saw a ghost. Verse 41 it says, While they yet believed not for joy, and wondered and said unto them, Have ye here any meat? There in that passage, they had the attitude of this is too good to be true. 
All that to say is it may not be easy for others to believe what you know to be true simply because you say it's so. So if they doubt you, don't take it personally. As long as you're believing the truth, that's what really matters. Keep believing the truth no matter what people say. Now what can we take away from this story? First of all, don't let your understanding get in the way of your faith. Proverbs 3, 5 says, To trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. There we have two options. Option one, trusting in the Lord. Option two, leaning on your own understanding. And they are opposites. You cannot do both. If you are relying on your own understanding, you are not trusting in God. And if you're trusting in God, you will not be relying on your own understanding. So don't let your understanding or lack thereof get in the way of your faith. Trust in God regardless of whether you understand it. Like these ladies there at the tomb were perplexed. They did not immediately believe that Jesus had risen from the dead because they didn't understand it. Don't let that happen to you. Choose to believe whether you understand it all or not. Secondly, don't let what you don't know about a circumstance or a situation make you forget what you do know, specifically about what God has said. Again, too often we get into a confusing situation. Immediately the things that were once rock solid in our thinking are now called into question. And we begin to doubt other things that we knew, once knew to be true because now we're facing circumstances we cannot explain. Especially in times of confusion, we need to have faith in the things that we do know from God's Word to be true. Don't allow confusion to create doubt. Hebrews 2.1 says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. Don't let the word of God that is truth slip from your mind. Cling to it, especially in times of confusion. Don't doubt it. And one other application we can make is this. Don't let other people's doubt cause you to doubt. Now, these ladies had seen the empty tune. They had heard the report from the angels. And yet other people doubted them. Perhaps there was a temptation in their minds to doubt what they had seen and heard that morning and to doubt the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you cannot let other people's lack of faith become your lack of faith. You have to trust in God. You have to believe God, regardless of what others say and do. You remember the story of the 12 spies in the book of Numbers? They went to spy out the land of Canaan, and when they came back, the Bible says that 10 of the 12 gave an evil report of the land. They said that the cities were too well fortified, the people were too powerful, and there was no way that they could ever conquer the land. And they discouraged the hearts of the people and the entire nation doubted God's ability to fulfill His promise all because 10 people doubted God's ability. Because of that, that entire generation had to spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness. Only Caleb and Joshua from that generation entered into the promised land because they alone had faith that God could and would do what He said. We cannot allow other people's doubts to become ours. We must have faith no matter what others say or do. The resurrection is essential to our faith. We have to believe in the resurrection to be saved. As Romans 10.9 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But not only is belief in the resurrection essential for salvation to begin with, it's essential to live by that same kind of faith. If you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead by the power of God, and by doing that, 
He conquered sin and death and has made eternal life available to you. And it is now yours by faith in Christ. If you believe that, then you should not doubt anything else about what God has said and about what God will do. Whatever problem you face, it's going to pale in comparison to the greatest problem you've ever faced, the problem of sin. And if God could solve that problem and did solve that problem, then have faith in the resurrection power of God to guide you and to protect you through whatever else you may face in life. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't let what you don't understand cause you to doubt what you know to be true. And don't let the doubts of others cause you to doubt. Just believe. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that your Son not only died for our sins but rose again. And thank you that because He has risen to live forevermore, we can have eternal life. And thank you that it also assures us that you have the power to deliver us from whatever problem, whatever trial, whatever heartache we might face here on this earth, that you will guide us and that you will protect us. Lord, I pray that you would grow our faith. So many times we are like the father who brought his daughter to Jesus and Jesus asked if he believed and he said, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Lord, we want to believe, we want to have faith in you, but yet we're tempted to doubt. And Lord, we ask that in patience and mercy, you would work in us to grow our faith. And Lord, I pray that as these ladies shared the message of the resurrection with their friends, that we would also be faithful to share the life-giving message of the gospel with those around us. Lord, may you get the glory and honor from us that you deserve. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.